Hey guys, welcome back to Man Warcon 2022. Sophie Line here, and I'm here with General Dynamics Land Systems, and today we're going to show you a new piece of tech. Let's roll. All right, so I'm here with Mr. Reese, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about the MPF program first. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Reese. I'm the Director of Business Development for General Dynamics Land Systems. And uh, I'm a retired Army tanker. I was in the Army for 30 years. And uh, the vehicle that I'm sitting behind is the first new combat vehicle that the Army has developed in over 40 years. So, new from the ground up. It doesn't have a cool name yet like the Sherman or the Patton or the Abrams. It's called the Mobile Protected Firepower Vehicle. The purpose of this vehicle is to provide infantry brigades, in other words, dismounted soldiers, with a source of large caliber precision firepower when they run into an enemy force that is beyond the capability that they have on their backs to deal with. So a lot of people would look at this and call it a light tank and um, it sort of is, it looks like a tank, it is lighter than a tank, but inside the U.S. Army they don't like to use that expression because it's not designed to fight like a tank. Its purpose is not to go out and have tank-to-tank -tank battles with other enemy tanks. Its purpose is to support dismounted soldiers who are hung up by enemy dug into a bunker or hiding in a building or in some place where the small arms that an infantryman carries can't deal with the threat. It doesn't quite have the, the survivability, the protection to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with another enemy tank. So that's why the Army doesn't like that term, light tank, even though most people look at it and they go, oh, a light tank. You mentioned that we have an Abrams turret. Yes. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that and the benefits of being able to have because you have, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we have both okay. systems here. Sure. Tell me a little bit about some of the benefits of having things like that. that this was a comp uh, competition that we just won at the end of June. And our approach to the competition was, because we built the Abrams tank, and the, uh, the soldiers in the Army know what an Abrams is and how it functions, and the Army supply system and the Army engineering system is designed to support the Abrams tank, we thought it would be an advantage for this mobile protected firepower vehicle to leverage that capability. So the, the four-person crew in here does the same four things as they do on an Abrams tank. You have a commander, a gunner, a loader, and a driver. Uh, so you have a four-person crew, and the controls that they use, with the exception of the driver, are exactly the same as an Abrams tank. So the commander's sights and controls, the gunner's sights and controls, and the, and the loader, the way he loads around and operates the, the cannon, is just like inside of an Abrams tank. So if you're a 19 kilo, that's the Army's MOS term for a tanker, and you get in this vehicle, you will need almost no training to operate the turret. Yeah. It's not the exact same physical turret on the outside, but on the inside it is all the same. Cool, man. Awesome. All right, well, let's take a closer look. So uh, the major features of the vehicle after we talk about the crew and situated inside the turret, the mobility part of the name comes from the fact that it is a very highly mobile, uh, traditional tracked vehicle. It has, however, unlike the Abrams, a diesel engine up front of the vehicle, front mount, uh, which provides a very high power to weight ratio uh, given the weight of the vehicle. And it has hydrodynamic shock absorbers instead of pushing bars. So the soldiers that have these things say it rides like a dream. It's really nice and smooth. In terms of protection, it has uh, armor panels uh, in certain key areas that I can't you know, really discuss on this channel uh, to meet the requirements that the Army has for survivability. It also uses the same system on the back here where the ammunition is separated from the crew compartment. So in case there's a detonation of ammunition in here because you've been shot, the, the explosion will not move into the turret where the crew is located, which is the same kind of way that the Abrams and most other Western tanks work. So you're not going to see the turret throwing contest? Right. One you, by anything you, like this. You won't see the T-72 candles that you see uh, coming out of Ukraine, for example. Right. Yeah, which is a really major, major advantage of any Western combat vehicle or tank over a Soviet or Russian design, Chinese design. Mm, gotcha. And in terms of uh, lethality, it has the same kinds of weapon systems as, as a tank does. A 50 caliber machine gun for the commander, a 30 caliber machine gun that is mounted along with a large caliber main gun. Uh, so this thing has a lot of firepower, and if you're a dismounted infantry formation, there's not too many things that you're going to run into that this vehicle cannot help you uh, destroy or defeat or get you out of a hot spot. All right, so next thing that we're going to look at is the application of this vehicle. Let's go. 
Well, I'm Mark Hu. I also work for General Dynamics Land Systems, and uh, my area particularly is with business development on the uh, track combat vehicle. So that includes the uh, mobile protected firepower that we're talking about today. And the aspect I'd like to share with you right now just is how is this actually going to be utilized? And I would say some of you might have as frame of reference if you think back to uh, old World War II movies or maybe some of the Vietnam movies, and you saw the infantry moving behind the tank and they had a little radio connected to, you know, the handset connected to the tank. This vehicle has exactly the same thing. So on the left rear, it has a telephone very, very similar to what was used back in those days. And it allows the dismounted soldiers that are being uh, uh, using this this mobile protective firepower, they can communicate directly with their crew. And so they, they can talk to them and they can direct them if they saw a target or if they had something specifically they wanted to engage, they could do that. Um, and the, you know some of the questions that have come up uh, you know, today were at the uh, Nuva Warfighter Conference at Fort Benning and some of the questions that people have come by the booth, a lot of them are captains attending the career course they're asking you know, how does it work and what, you know, what does it do um, people think about maybe the Sheridan, the 551 Sheridan which was uh, a, a light tank that was used uh, up through Vietnam and, and even into uh, Panama, I was thinking maybe a little bit in Desert Storm. Uh, 97, I think, is when it was taken out of the inventory. But there's been that gap, and Tim had referred to this being the first you know, major combat vehicle introduced in 40 years, and this sort of fills that goal. Uh, that vehicle was, was originally designed to be airdroppable, yeah, the army kind of got away from that, had some had some challenges, and then started using lapes. It was pulled out of the back of an backpack with the parachutes and uh, and deployed that. Way. So I've had people ask if this is what this uh, MPF will do, and it will not. This MPF uh, was designed to put two of them on a C-17 aircraft, so it actually has to land into a secured airfield and then pull off. So it can be uh, made ready for for combat very, very quickly um, you know, to, to get ready to go do the fight. Uh, but it does bring something that the dismounted infantry have not had in a long time, you know, as far as a capability uh, to destroy targets and instead of uh, an infantry unit getting pinned down by a machine gun for a long time and can't maneuver, they can call up the, uh, the take the firepower to uh, get them out of the situation. They, they, you know, said you know, during the, the soldier testing, they said we would go to war in this today. So they really liked it, hmm. you know, and you know, fires uh, with the same precision that an Abrams does. You know, that's one of our specialties is hmm. fire control. So it's got the same stabilized. You know, fire control, you can shoot on the move. I've seen it running with bump forces and just drill on targets really accurately. So, and uh, you know, Tim talked about the familiarity with the crews already. So, this one does have a four man crew that with the gun commander, loader, and driver. If the army wanted to go to an auto loader, they could. So, our engineers have already figured that out if the army made that decision. Just, that's not a requirement right now. Engineers have already you know, figured out how to, how to make that happen. So it's it's certainly an upgradable um, vehicle, and that's a big thing too. You don't want something that is going to be you know, obsolete in ten years. You know, by the time you just start getting it fielded, and suddenly it's run out of steam. So it's going to, you know, it, it's built with that uh, in mind to be able to continually uh, upgrade. So, there's still the 12 original prototypes that are going to be uh, upgraded to the latest version um, and then returned back to Army so pretty soon, to the next couple of years. Are you guys going to reveal or show anything at AUSA? Yes, we will. Um, and then we're going to be bringing uh, four new vehicles. Uh, one that for the tank community we would be pretty excited about is going to be, we're calling it Abrams X. It's a tech demonstrator for the tank. So it's not something that necessarily the Army is saying this is our next generation tank, but it does offer up many of the new technologies and capabilities uh, as we're looking for where to take the tank next. So that will be there and it'll be uh, showcased. Should be pretty exciting. Awesome. Thank you. All right. If you want to see some more of this, then we'll see this vehicle as well as some other ones at AUSA this year. 
and we'll see you guys then. Thank you.